individual segments, they work very well on their own, but they always serve a deeper purpose, it seems like. Yeah. Um, and the following chapter, you have, uh, it, it kind of goes through Polycyc, not necessarily just his dreams. Uh, but I want to, before I, we get into that, I want to ask you a question about the framing of these chapters and uh, perhaps the whole book. Um, you have mentioned to me and I'm sure others that it is more difficult, at least for you, to frame a section than it is to get these long runs of dialogue. So you'll begin with the dialogue and then you'll frame it with paragraphs and little poeticisms here and there. Uh, why do you think that is? And what, what, uh, because I have several quotes here that I, that I have added as I've read, uh, and some of these things add little bits of imbument to what goes on later. So I, I would agree that it is more important how you frame something than what exists there, so long as it coheres well. Well, I mean, you're doing characters and, and talking back and forth. It's like watching a play. It's easy it's easy to do so, but but having the in the beginnings and ends of a chapter is like a frame, and so you want to have something that grabs someone because you have to grab someone and you have to end well so that they'll want to read the next chapter. Um, this is this is classic melodrama. This is classic serial fiction writing, um, like the chapter you just met, he, mentioned here, chapter seven, prime time. Paul starts with it was in the green torso of the canyon with the soul of another dream rotted, that Paul and Maravelli first felt that he was something more than just a hood. It was in this dream, perhaps, first dreamt not long after the end of the Great War, that Paulie decided to veer ever so slightly from his then unswervable plan to be the most powerful and feared mobs in the nation. So, and then we we get, we get the, so we, it's a way also to get out, outside. People having dreams, people, uh, people uh, in a, in a, in a situation that then switches to something else. You don't, I mean, on occasions I've had chapters in some of my books that will start I need off. I to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. Um, the great war imagery there that connects to the first chapter, the first poly chapter where, you know, the, the, the smog of a great war emerges. So it's not just at the end of the great war, but it's also referring to the first chapter. And that's a connection that, that, many readers would make. Um, so there's that as well. So this this intro doesn't just, I don't know if you consciously did that or not, but it, it ties in with things that happened before in the book too and perhaps later. No, and, and that's a good point because I, I didn't consciously, and, and the thing is, even if I didn't consciously plan something and it came unconsciously, that doesn't matter if that works for you as the reader. Ultimately, the reader's satisfaction, the reader's enlightenment, enjoyment, the reader's benefit is more important than what I'm striving out to be. 